This question relates to emotions of self-deception. Yep. And you and I gave a seminar on that topic four or five years ago. Yeah, I think it was 2010 or something. Yeah. Yeah. So this person says, thank you so much for speaking about the emotions of self-deception. Mm -hmm. I'm totally stuck with processing and these, and these kinds of emotions. Mm. I've been really losing faith that I can do this. I feel like I'm just going around in circles with shame and anger and getting nowhere. And to be honest, I really just want to give up. Mm. Can you talk a bit about what signs there may be that we're actually getting somewhere instead of going around in circles? Well, I think she's identified the signs. <laughs> <laughs> you, when you go around in circles, you feel like you want to give up. Yep. Uh, when you go around in circles, you you feel like you're processing emotions, but you know nothing's really changing. Mm -hmm. So these are all signs that you're just going around in circles and nothing's really changing. Now, and signs that you are completely in self-deception. Yeah. In other words, you are processing through emotions of self-deception. Mm -hmm. So it's pointless doing that. Now, the, the real thing we need to look at, though, is why are we doing it? Mm. So why do, in this case, the lady saying she's fluctuating between emotions of shame, yep. which is an effect emotion, yep. and anger, which is also an effect emotion mm -hmm. most of the time. So she's fluctuating between two effect emotions. Of course, if you fluctuate between two effect emotions, you will never address causal emotion. Mm -hmm. So of course, you're never going to progress. You're never going to become at one with God doing that. So you can f do this for the rest of your life and nothing will change. And of course, after a while, you'll get tired of that. And then you'll say, oh, it's all because of AJ's teachings about emotions. <laughs> right? And obviously, it's not what I'm talking about. Yep. When we are in emotions of self-deception, such as shame and anger and so forth, we are doing it to avoid other things. And we need to have a good, solid look at our will, how we're using our will. We're using our will to stay in emotions that are preferable Self-deception emotions are preferable mm -hmm. rather than feeling the emotions that are not preferred, the more painful emotions that we don't wish to experience. That's why we choose to be self-deceived. Mm. So when you're fluctuating between shame, anger, shame, anger, shame, anger, feeling different emotions that are around in this cycle, what you're doing is you're fluctuating between two self-deceptive emotions. They're not the causal emotions. Mm. So you're fluctuating between two self-deception emotions. One is you wanting to blame other people and the other one is you want to blame yourself. Yeah. And both of those things are not true. Yeah. You can't blame other people and you can't blame <laughs> yourself. You need to get deeper into the actual causal pain. Most people who fluctuate in, in self-deception emotions are not willing to go to their real pain. That's the problem. They don't trust God. They have no faith that God will help them through the process they don't trust that this is the actual process and they justify to themselves that there's no reason to do it and they'd prefer to feel like they're doing something. And so what they do is they create effect-based emotions mm -hmm. such as shame and anger and so forth and then they choose to feel all of that. Yeah. Now, you do all of that because you're avoiding your addictions. You don't want to feel your addictions. Mm -hmm. And every time you, you get your addictions met, you're happy. Mm -hmm. And every time your addictions are not met, you either go into self, sh you know, shame. Punishment. In other words, self-punishment. Yeah. Or you go into anger, mm -hmm. where you want to punish someone else. Mm -hmm. Both things are really anger. Mm -hmm. One's anger with yourself and the other one is anger with someone else. Yeah. And both of them are in avoidance of the addiction that you're actually in. So what you need to do to get out of this cycle is to be really honest about your addictions. What I observe is the majority of people who don't want to have, be honest about their addictions at all. Mm. In, a pre, in, a, in a recent um, seminar we, it, at Kyabra, it was called Understanding Your Emotional Self. I talked to a group of people who were involved in an interaction relating to different emotions they were experiencing. Yeah. Very few of them wanted to see what was really going on. Yeah. One of them reverted to feeling like she was to blame when mm. she wasn't. Mm -hmm. The other one reverted to feeling like someone else to blame when they weren't. Yeah. And she was actually to blame for her unloving behaviour. Yeah. And, and many of them had no desire to work through why they didn't 
you know, have direct, honest communication yeah. with the real problem. Yeah. And, and so we find this happening all the time. Yeah. All of it's driven by emotions of self-deception. Mm -hmm. They want to believe that it's this problem or that problem when it's not. Mm. Many people who are abusive towards other people want to believe that the other people have been abusive to them. Yeah. <laughs> that's the reality. That's what justifies, that's how they justify their abusive behaviour. Mm. Like we have many people interact with us who, who get angry with us or attempt to abuse us and then when we draw the line in the sand, they tell us that we're the ones being unloving. <laughs> how is that? <laughs> like how do they even come to that conclusion? By deceiving themselves. That's how they come to that conclusion. Yeah. So many people desire self-deception and we've got to examine the reason why. And the main reason why is we don't want to let go of our addictions. Mm. We would prefer to have our addictions met. And when they don't get met, we either punish ourselves or punish someone else, but our addictions are still there yep. and we're still not acknowledging them. And often we, we cry, we're crying, not recognising that we're just crying because we're angry or we're not getting it. And that's something we talked about in that talk yes. of emotions of self-deception. But, Correct. But basically you're saying all of this emotional stuff that's going on in this state is occurring because we want to avoid the truth of our addictions. Yes, and we want to avoid the truth of our fears and we want to avoid the feeling and experiencing the real pain. Mm -hmm. So we, we are very uh, clever at substituting pain. Mm -hmm. In other words, we decide that that pain over there is too hard for me to experience, but this pain is okay, I can handle that pain. Now, if you get into that state where you start substituting pain, which is a self-deceptive state, you will find eventually even that pain becomes frustrating. Yes. And too painful to experience. Yeah. Uh, even the self-deception pain yeah. will eventually become frustrating to experience. Well, even more frustrating, really, won't it? Because you, there's no relief. There's no relief from it, yeah. ever. Yeah. Ever, because it's just a self-deception. It's just an emotion we're creating to avoid another emotion. Mm -hmm. So it's self-deception. And while we feel those emotions, nothing will change. Not a single thing will change. We cannot become one with God while we're doing this. Mm -hmm. You see, we've got to be a lot more truthful with ourselves. And the majority of people aren't very truthful with themselves when they begin this process. And they've got to go through the process of going, wow, I just did all that to avoid a whole heap of things. Yeah. And I might as well stop doing it. I might, may as well instead look at what I'm avoiding by doing it. That's what I need to do, become really honest about what's really going on inside of myself. And you, you can get help to do that mm -hmm. if you want. You can go to a psychologist to get some help to do that. There are some good people, psychologists, who might be able to help you say, well, there you go again. You're off feeling something that, you know, it's not even true. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you know, yep. There you go again. There you go again. Now you're drama queening again. You know, like, <laughs> now you're creating this emotion of self-deception again. And eventually we might realise every time we do it, and then realise what the motivation is. Yeah. And that that's the key thing. Yeah. We need to find the motivation for our self-deception. Mm -hmm. And there's always a motivation. And this is where you said earlier that it's an issue of will. Yes. So basically we need to find where our will is actually directed away from causal emotion and why what's motivating that will well, why? what do i really want to do here what yeah. am i trying to achieve here yeah. what i'm trying to achieve is avoidance of my addictions yeah. i'm trying to not be be clueless about my addictions that's mm -hmm. what i'm trying to do mm -hmm. i've got to be honest about that if i'm ever going to get beyond my addictions mm -hmm. i've got to be honest about my addictions to get beyond them i've got to be honest about my fear in order to feel it i've got to be honest about the pain that's in me before i'll feel the pain that's in me most people are not, no. right? So, so what we do instead is we create a whole group of other emotions which are all self-created often or learned techniques that we learned, you know, usually during our later childhood years of how to avoid the emotion. Mm -hmm. And then we engage those particular techniques and we think we're emotional processing. No, you're not. You're not processing through emotion. You're not actually working through it. You're not actually experiencing causal emotion. You're just creating new emotions to you, for you to feel so that you can avoid doing that and, and avoid telling yourself the truth that you're really scared yeah. 
of getting to what is the real problem. Mm. You mm. know? And this is a problem with not acknowledging fear. Yeah. Is that we eventually we eventually create motions of self deception in order to not acknowledge what is really the problem because we're too afraid to acknowledge what is really the problem. So then if we go back to the second part of this question, mm -hmm. which was could you talk a bit about what signs there may be when we're actually getting somewhere? So when we're actually starting to move through causal okay, emotion so let's or talk even about, addictions. Let's talk about, you know, because there's well, a let's process, talk about, isn't there? We've talked about the signs of what happens when you're not. not yeah. <laughs> let's talk about some of the signs of what happens when you are. When you are actually processing through causal emotion, every time you process an emotion, you feel relief. Mm -hmm. your, your body will physically change. You will notice less lines on your face. You'll notice like any weight that you've put on temporarily comes off again. Yeah. You'll notice that you feel more joy. You feel uh, more alive and more engaged. You also feel more sensitive to truth mm -hmm. as a result. Mm -hmm. So you notice things more than you did before. Mm -hmm. and, and also your behaviour is more loving automatically. Yeah. You, so you're not trying. You're not trying to be yeah. loving. You just automatically feel like you want to be loving yeah. and you automatically are as a result. These are all signs that you actually are processing through causal emotion. Mm -hmm. If none of those things are actually occurring, then you're not processing through causal emotion, no matter how much you're crying, no matter how much you feel fear, no matter how much you're feeling shame, you're not processing through causal emotion. You're in the addiction yeah. and you need to be honest with yourself. If, so what basically we can say is if there is no positive change towards love that's automatic, then you are not processing causal emotion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, there's only two reasons why that could be occurring. One is that you're processing through the layers of addiction and, and it's only when you get to the causal emotion that eventually there'll be some release. And we do need to process through the layers of addiction. We do need to come to see our addictions. That is certainly true. But while we're doing that, we probably will find that we're not, you know, outwardly much different than what we were before because it's our causal emotion that needs to change everything. that changes everything. So we might be doing that or more often than not, we are in emotions of self-deception mm. if we're feeling emotion where we're, where we're going through all these different emotional experiences and none of them are real. Yep. And none of them are real because we don't want any of them to be real. <laughs> we need to understand it's the use of our will. Yeah. Do you think there's signs that we have a, even before we get to releasing causal emotion, if we are in the process of working through addiction mm -hmm. and getting more in contact with fear, do you think that there's signs that we have? Of course there's signs, but they're, easy, they're much they're less, more difficult to read yeah. from an external perspective. And this is where we have to be really honest with ourselves, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Like if we're really honest and we hear all this theory, we can start to identify Am I in self-deception? Am I working through addiction? Is yeah. this causal emotion? Yeah. yeah. Causal emotion is beautiful to feel. You, yeah. You'll enjoy feeling it yeah. probably. Yeah. It causes you to feel connected to your soul. Even though, even if it's grief, even if it's terrible grief or fear, it feels you, you're connected with your soul. You, there's always a relief in your body afterwards. Mm -hmm. There's always a relief in your emotional state afterwards. Things around you, your law of attraction changes instantly as soon as you've actually made a, a release mm -hmm. of a causal emotion. Your, your attractions will change instantly. Um, you'll be less influenced by spirits. You'll be more positive, uh, less negative. Um, so, you know, <laughs> these are the changes that automatically occur. And, and if they are not occurring, you, you would need to examine. Yeah, there's a high likelihood I'm in self-deception, or I'm processing through my addictions, one of the two. Mm -hmm. Now, there are signs you're processing through your addictions, mm -hmm. and it's quite simple. Your addictions reduce <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you process through your addictions and you become more afraid. Yeah. In other words, if you're truly processing through your addictions, you don't revert to anger. Right? Mm -hmm. The anger is a sign that you're not processing through your addictions. Yeah. If you're pr truly processing through your addictions, what happens is you become more afraid because remember, every addiction was created in order to cover over your fear. Yeah. So as you expose every addiction, you feel more fear as a result. So mm -hmm. if you're becoming more afraid, mm -hmm. right, and you notice in your life there's less physical and emotional addictions, yeah. then that means you're processing through your addictions. Yeah. But if you're not becoming more afraid, 
right? Then you're not processing through your addictions mm -hmm. because your addictions are the layer upon your fear. So becoming more afraid is actually a good sign if you're processing through your addictions. You're not yet at your causal emotion, perhaps, but there is, there's the sign that there's something happening that's causing you to shift from being in denial mm -hmm. into being aware of the, the underlying fear that drives most of your addictive behaviour. So that's how you know you're, you're working through addiction. Yeah, yeah. that's great. So, so it may take quite a few years for the average person on the planet to work through addiction. Mm -hmm. We have uh, usually established addictions at a very, very young age and, uh, and usually most of them have been taught to us. And so it does take time to work our way through those addictions and, feel, and allow ourselves to feel the fear that's underneath that drives those addictions the fear of grief or the fear of other childhood emotions. Even the fear of just being a child yeah. causes you to do all sorts of things in addiction. What about this situation that I see occurring where people hear about divine truth, um, they hear about addictions, and a lot of people have been totally clueless that they've lived their entire life in addiction. Mm -hmm. They've mm -hmm. thought that it's normal and that it's love when your addictions get met and mm -hmm. it's all very... And then they sort of go, oh, wow. They start to acknowledge. They start to acknowledge intellectually that mm -hmm. there's issues. Yeah. And they restrict their lifestyle and their habits in mm -hmm. certain ways in an effort to try to not be in so much addiction or challenge their addiction. Yeah. And then So they, they feel get... some guilt about their addiction. Yes. <laughs> you could say. Yeah. In other words, yes. I'm guilty. I did do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so and that feel, is not loving. And that's not loving that. and yeah. I can see that. So yeah. they then feel motivated to try to address some of these addictions. Yeah. <laughs> and then I notice people get to this point where they just feel terrible. They feel like there's no point, it's all painful, it's all yucky, it's all... Yeah, still all self-deception because this is avoidance of their fear. Yeah. Like, so they're coming up to the fear wall. You can mm -hmm. say the wall of fear is there, like so. Mm -hmm. And they're coming up to the fear wall as they deal with each addiction and as they notice each addiction, they're coming closer and closer to their wall of fear. Yeah. What I notice is most people become, even just start to see their wall of fear and then they run away. And most people run away from divine truth at that point, yeah. actually. That's the point where almost everybody who's ever left divine truth, mm -hmm. ever left the way, has left because they've come face to face with their fear and yeah. they don't want to face their fear, so they go. Yeah. They just run away. And many of them run away for years and some centuries and some thousands of years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some have run away for a long time mm -hmm. because they don't want to actually confront and work their way through their fears. Yeah. Right. So we need to be honest with ourselves even there. If we feel like we're getting to a place where we're just feeling like sad all the time, not apathetic. motivated, apathetic, don't want to go forward, don't want to go back. Yeah. It's because we're terrified. Yeah. And we need to start letting ourselves feel our terror, feel our fear about what's really going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, what I find is the mo most, most people, particularly women, but most people are very intolerant of the emotions of fear. Mm -hmm. So, and they'll do almost anything to avoid them. And, and they'll blame anybody in order to avoid them. And they'll get angry with anybody in order to avoid them. And they'll say all sorts of lies and all sorts of things to avoid them. And they'll say and engage in all sorts of self-deception in order to avoid them. Yep. And we've got to be honest with ourselves in that place. And we've got to say, actually, you know what? I'm really just terrified. <laughs> and, and, and once we even acknowledge that, we have a, a, a stronger ability to develop the desire to feel it. Because in the end, it's only the desire to feel it that will, mo will motivate us to get through that. Yeah. And for me, it's my desire for my relationship with God and my relationship with you that motivates me through th those fears, yeah. motivates me to just sit in the fear and feel it rather than acting upon it. Mm -hmm. and, and what I've found is there's got to be something that's more important to you than the fear itself mm -hmm. in order for you to go through fear. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's why I feel most people don't go through their fear because there's nothing more important to them than their fear. Mm. They, they honour their fear, they treat it like a god, and as a result they don't have much of a desire to work through it. Mm. You, to, have a, to develop a desire to work through your fear is a very key part of this path. Yeah. The way to God, on the way to God, 
by the time you're at one with God, fear is non-existent in your life. That means you live every like day in harmony with truth. That in this world that we live in now, that's a very difficult thing to do because the majority of people are going to be very, very challenged by you living in harmony with truth. And that's the reason why you don't want to do it. Mm. Most people are so afraid of living in harmony with truth. And that's the reason why when they come to their fear wall, they run away and tell themselves a whole heap of lies doing so. Yep. Because, because it's preferable than telling themselves the truth to go through their fear and then finding out that all the things they were afraid of actually happen. Mm -hmm. Like they are now getting attacked by their family and their mm -hmm. friends mm -hmm. and, and, you know, they lost their job because of this particular reason and that particular reason. Their life's falling apart now. Like potentially that's what they feel. It's not yep. true, but that's what they believe. Their life will fall apart now if they fully engage the truth and they fully engage living in harmony with all of their emotions all the time. They believe that they're going to, you know, create a huge mess. And so they hit that wall and run away. Yeah, and you talked about this in a talk that you gave at an assistance group in Texas last year in 2013, mm -hmm. something that has been very powerful for me working through, and that is um, dealing with the sense of hopelessness that many of us experienced as a child because there was no Hope way out. As a child. There was no way of getting those emotions out and feeling better or there was no yeah. way to avoid yeah. a continual situation where we didn't feel like... Well, the sad thing for most children is this. They had some kind of negative emotion projected at them from their parents. Mm -hmm. They usually probably tried to cry about it initially. Mm -hmm. They were told they'd get more violence if they cried, yep. generally. That's yep. the case. Now we've got a problem. Now the parent has shut down not only the emotional experience from the first emotion, but has also told them that they will get more violent reaction from the parent mm -hmm. if they cry about the first one. Now that's an injustice upon an injustice. Yes. Yep. That's the sad thing, and most of us have experienced it. Now once we've experienced that, we feel like, what's the point? Like, mm -hmm. I can't even cry about how I've been treated, let alone feel about how I've been treated yeah. and how bad that was. Yeah. I can't even cry about it anymore. Yeah. And I'm treated as if that's bad as well. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, many of us are going to get to the wall of fear and realise that actually it's, it's a lot about feelings of hopelessness and despair. So there's and no point there's moving, no through, point emotion moving through it. Because it's all it's this childhood experience of feeling very restricted. Yes. And that even when I cry, it doesn't mean it's not going to happen again, which is really And most of the time when we were a child, if we did cry, it, it did happen worse, again. Yes. Or it even was worse. Yes. So this is our problem as a child is we go, oh, it's worse if I cried, so I've got to turn off crying. And then we finish up growing up saying, uh, I'm not I'm emotional. Not that emotional. I'm yeah. not that emotional. And then we wonder why. Yeah. Because of course you've been shut down terribly. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. So you need to allow yourself to feel about that. And to feel, for myself, feeling that sense of hopelessness has not only helped, assisted me with desire, and you were talking about having a purpose, having a, something that will cause us to want to move through fear. Mm. And for myself, experiencing some of that emotion has enabled me to re-establish desires for mm. God and for you and for even myself and to mm. be happy. Mm. But um, I suppose I'm sharing that just by way of encouragement to people who are, mm. who are sitting camped out in front of that wall of fear feeling yuck but not really just connecting to the reasons why they feel so hopeless. Yeah, so I, I feel this wall of fear, though. Most people don't camp out in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's just me. I camped Mate, out for you, a while. You have, but yeah. most of the people will don't. You know, they get to it, they even just look at it and they go, ah! And, <laughs> and then they go. They go. It's like, yeah. <laughs> so it's gone. And, uh, and then they use all sorts of justification, anger and all sorts of other things to justify, and usually condescension, belittling, you know, all sorts of justification about the or way. Yeah. as though, no, that's not the way and all that kind of stuff, to tell themselves, and it's all just an avoidance of their terror, that's mm -hmm. all it is. Mm -hmm. And they tell themselves all sorts of things in that place. Like we've had many, many people tell themselves all sorts of things, yeah. as you know. Yeah. And you know how hard it is to sit in front of that terror and not 
and, and just sit there and sit there and sit there and sit there without any addictions anymore yeah. to help you cover them over. That, that's <laughs> it's quite pretty painful. It's a pretty painful place, and and you know it's taken a bit of encouragement from myself and Definitely. and also discussion with each other about the truth about God, like yeah. that God wants you through this place, yeah. that you can trust God through this place, that you can have faith that this is how your soul was made through this place yeah. and that things will get better through this place and then you've had a few experiences of your own which have, which have caused your life to get better yeah. and then you realise, wow, yes, I can trust all of that and then you start moving through that barrier okay. of fear. Mm -hmm. but, but the majority of people don't do that. They don't sit in front of their fear long enough to mm. do that. Mm. They, they get to their fear and off they go. And for, for many on the path, they haven't even got to their fear yet because they're still steeped in their the addictions, addictions. Yep. Uh, yeah, and I not even that. honest about what those addictions are. Yeah. And so, so they never get to see their fear, of course. Yeah. And, and this is the trouble with all these self-deceptions is that we never get to our addictions, we never get to our fears. How can you ever get to your real causal emotional pain that's, that's causing most of your unloving behaviour? if you're unwilling to even deal with your addictions or your fears? The answer is you can't. No. And, and so my suggestion to a person is if they feel stuck, wherever they feel stuck, so they might feel stuck in acknowledging their addictions, mm -hmm. just sit there. <laughs> <laughs> feel that place and how you know, pointless it feels and how, how much of a struggle it feels and feel that place. And at some point in your future, you will decide, I want to get through this place. I don't want to go back to the life I had before. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be steeped in these addictions that cause me to be unloving. I want to get through and be a more loving person and eventually your desire will build strong, strong enough if you allow it yep. and if you actively exercise the muscle of desire, which yes. we'll talk about more in the upcoming assistance groups, and you will actually eventually have enough will to go, yes, I want to feel my addictions. I want to know what they are. I want to work through them. I want to get to the point where I'm face to face with my fear. <laughs> and then once we're face to face with our fear and we're just sitting there terrified looking <laughs> yeah. at this mountain of fear that we feel in front of us and bear in mind that it looks like a mountain because everyone who's terrified always thinks it's a mountain. Yeah. And, and we stay there in that place until we have a strong enough desire to actually start processing it, to actually feel it as an emotion and let it go. And yeah. then we get through with that. And then we get through our fear. That's how we get through yeah. our fear. And, and a lot of that is working through the false beliefs we have about fear even, isn't it? The, and yeah. those, those things I was referring to, the hopelessness. We have the hundreds of judgment. false beliefs. So, there's so much, fear, so much judgment about fear on the planet as well. I feel. Not only just judgment, it's like false beliefs other than judgment exist. You yeah. know, like there's so much false, just false justification of I shouldn't have to go through it. It's not safe for me to go through it. Yeah. I'm going to be worse if I go through it. There's all sorts of things we tell ourselves and most people are telling themselves those things, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and so, of course, they never get through it, mm -mm. right, because they, they're listening to their own lies, yeah. right? God doesn't believe that you can't go through fear. Mm -hmm. God doesn't believe that it's pointless. God doesn't believe that afterwards you're going to be, you know, in some like weird state that you don't know, you know, you're going to be better. You well, it will be weird because you've never felt so good. <laughs> well, it might, it, it, but It'll it won't be... be weird in the sense of, you know, it won't, it won't be a sad place no. or, a, a, or, or a bizarre a, a bizarre place. place. Yeah. It's actually a place where you feel more desire, more passion in your life, more happiness, more joy. More. So, mm -hmm. so if we're not feeling those things on the path and if we're stuck, then it's because we are usually justifying ourselves not progressing forward yeah. and the only reason why you wouldn't progress forward is because you're afraid mm. so you really need to start facing what that wall of fear is mm -hmm. if you're really going to progress and if you haven't even touched your addictions yet you're never going to see it no because your addictions are there to cover it all over yeah. it's like it's like putting up a huge concrete wall and then putting a big you know ivy over it or something you know some plant over it so you can't see it that's yeah. what we've done with our fear most of us we go oh isn't this environment so pretty but i can't move in that direction because there's a solid wall there but i oh, it's not a wall it's just a lovely ivy you know it's a <laughs> lovely plant that covers it all over you know <laughs> and yeah. that's how we see our fear we most of us are in complete denial of it because we want our addictions met and we're not honest about that and once we get through that place where we actually want our addictions and we want to see our addictions, see what they are, feel what they are, then we come face to face with our wall of fear. And the key at that point is don't run away. <laughs>
Because if you run away, you're going to do a lot of damaging things when you run away. You will because you'll be living in your fear. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not a very wise course of action to run away. You're better off taking up camp and sitting there <laughs> than you are running away. And even better than that would be start examining all your beliefs about fear. Yeah. And, and, and accepting God's beliefs about them. And the only way to accept God's beliefs about them is to emotionally connect, emotionally connect to our beliefs about fear. Correct. In my experience, Correct. We, it's all fine to have a discussion about it, yep. but until we just really emotionally connect with what we believe is going to happen when we feel fear, that's the only time we make space for God's truth to enter us. That's right, and and motivate us towards actually releasing fear. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So so for for um, I don't know the lady's name. It, was there was no name. There was no name. name. So for this lady who asked this question, and I feel lots and lots of people are in this state. My suggestion is if you notice now that you're in emotions of self-deception, that's great mm -hmm. because you've now told, see, oh, I've been fooling myself and that's really good to see that. But, but look at the reasons why and the reasons primarily why are that you do not want to face the addictions that you have because you don't want to let them go. And if you're ever going to progress forward, you're going to have to face them to let them go. Yeah. Or you do not want to face the fears you have and you don't want to let them go. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to progress forward, you're going to have to let them go. That means you're going to have to face them at some point. So what I would suggest for the people in this position is that they allow themselves to examine their addictions more completely. Mm -hmm. And they also are more honest with, they need to be more honest with themselves about their addictions. And then also, in addition to that, they need to allow themselves to come face to face with their wall of fear. And instead of running away and instead of using techniques to run away like they always have all the way through their life, they need to be far more honest with themselves and allow themselves to just sit there and feel it for a while and feel how terrified they are yeah. and allow themselves to work through their false beliefs about fear. Mm -hmm. God doesn't have any false beliefs about fear. Mm -mm. God knows it's just an emotion. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sonny. No worries. Mm -hmm.